The Hunger Game asks students to think about how do you feed your own people. The simulation places a group of students on an island and the goal for each island is to feed their people. The game is about you have your little island with a certain population and each year you get uh, harvests and uh, you have to fulfill different nutritional needs of the people. So uh, what you then did was that you traded with the other groups in order to, to fulfill your nutritional needs. We use poker chips to designate different food items, so starches, fruits, vegetables, seafood, and livestock. The game starts out with students needing to get to their designated values of all the different nutrients. And so they just begin by trading their different poker chips back and forth trying to get to their ideal levels, otherwise they face penalties. At the end of each round, the students tally what they've acquired, what they have a surplus of, what they have a deficit of, and then their population either declines or increases depending on if they've met their food requirements. We were able to trade with other islands that were around um, trading livestock, trading starch, and really trying to persuade them and saying, okay, well this is more important than this. This is why you should trade with me, things like that. Can you trade us for food? I mean, for food, <laughs> fruits and vegetables. Um, do you have excess of that? Fruit. We will yeah. take a livestock for a fruit. As the game progresses, there's different factors, different fates, different wild cards that come into play that require the students to adapt and think creatively of how are they still going to feed their people despite positive and negative conditions that are outside of their own control. Moving into the second round, we introduce technology. And so students, if they have a surplus of certain food items, can purchase technology, which allows their total food supply to increase. And so the students really have to consider what's best for everyone, the larger population. Moving to the third round, we start introducing fate cards into the mix. And so this becomes a very rapid fire. The students have to consider their population might suddenly increase or decrease. There might be a flood, there might be a drought, natural conditions which impact their total food supply. And they have to adapt very quickly to those certain conditions. I know my team, we lost like more than half of our livestock, which was just frustrating. I think the challenges that kind of came up, which is really making them the most effective decision. I mean, at times you would have to lose some of your population and it's, do you lose it or do you try to figure out a way to, to uh, keep all the population? In the fourth round, students have the option of using their tech chips to purchase war balls. And the conditions for war that they have to consider are that they lose half of their own food supply, but the island they take over, they get their entire food supply. So students really have to calculate, does it make sense to go to war against another island? And, Islands can align with one another and combine their food supplies if that makes sense for them. And so you see a lot of negotiation, you see a lot of disputes breaking out between the different student groups. And so that really starts heightening the intensity of the game. So what are you willing to give us for this one? One, one starch. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? We have everything we need. You're dying. Are you kidding me? It's a balance. It's a really delicate balance between finding enough food to feed your population, but also trying to develop your nation in technology and defense systems. Having all those factors and hardly any time to discuss what the island should do and how the island should interact with other islands was really a fascinating activity for me. And although we tried to develop some sort of strategy, it was really difficult to balance all the variables and find a happy middle ground where we would be able to thrive. Each year, which was like five minutes or so, uh, it brought us a lot closer to, to really being organized and we started to giving each one of us roles and uh, compared to in the beginning when we just like took our, our food and just ran out and tried to to sell it to, to somebody and then someone else had gotten a deal and that couldn't be fulfilled. So, so that was really uh, the organization part I felt like was really helpful. In the fifth round, we just pick an island and say that island has been totally wiped out and 
the rest of the islands have to come up with some plan to create a sustainable food supply for that decimated island. And so you see the islands come together, you see a little negotiation going on. Some islands use force. They decide to tell the decimated island that we'll attack you and take you over if you don't listen to our plan. They threaten other islands. Some decide they're just gonna give them a one-time food supply, which isn't a sustainable measure. And so you really see the back and forth and students kind of considering the long-term and the short-term goals of what that means. The game ends after that and then we debrief what has happened, why they made the certain decisions that they did that led to the outcomes of the game. Thinking about food security, which has been kind of an underlying theme throughout the two weeks on a larger scale. And that's what I've got out of the game. I think a lot of us have been trying to stick with small and successful rather than large and lacking. But in the end, yeah, I feel like it did go, go well. The Hunger Game took many months of planning and different manifestations of throwing ideas up against the wall. Wendy Camille and I sort of sat down with a whole list of notes and ideas and really started to put it into place in terms of one game. Once we kind of had a broad structure, we were able to pilot what we had in Dan Gaudiano and Mike Judge's summer cap seats class and really get some student feedback as far as what worked, what didn't work. After playing it in their class, we kind of went back to the drawing board a little bit, made some edits, some adaptations, and then played it with a group of teachers in a real sort of expedited form. Took all those different notes and different variables and played it with the students in SGLI. At the end of the game, a lot of the students commented that their biggest criticism of the game that it wasn't longer. Even though we went for two hours straight, they wished the game could have continued, that there were more rounds, that there were more variables. And so I think for us, that was a great thing to hear, that we had created something that they were really engaged with. And hearing their comments afterwards, I think they understood the big issues and the challenges that do exist with feeding one's people and all of the different factors that might have to come into play for that.